not ready. I'm not ready. There we go. Hey, good morning, mediums. Welcome to another episode of Live here on Keystroke Medium. It's season three, episode eight. I am back after two weeks on hiatus. Of making meth in Quantico. That's right. Making meth and blowing money in Vegas. Right. Uh, we are making Sorry. a triumphant return. Uh, I am, rather, with uh, Nick Cole and Jason on Spock. Uh, they've been on the show several times before uh, talking about... Um, their standalone series and also the Galaxy's Edge series. And uh, today they're joining us to talk about how well it's doing and where it's going to go from here. So, Jason, Nick, welcome to the show. Hey, thank Hola. you. And uh, as a disappointment to all of our viewers, Nick Cole is not in his car. He's in his residence. And Jason broke his camera. I don't know. He looked Maybe at it Jason's sideways. In his car. He doesn't want us to know. <laughs> where he's at right now in this car oh yeah somebody's got to be in the car it could be no actually i just stay very still and i'm practicing my ventriloquist bit so that's a live picture of me and <laughs> <laughs> you guys you got talent is that walter that's walter <laughs> it's so brilliant uh, yeah so um welcome everybody that's hanging out in the live chat um, I feel like I'm, we should explain the meth comment. I'm so slightly off my game. I, I spent a week in uh, the DEA headquarters in Langley learning how to make meth so that I can destroy meth. Right. And, and not so I can like turn into what's his name from Breaking Bad. Right. Uh, and then I went to Las Vegas for a uh, union summit, which is why I look like a homeless guy. A homeless guy. I'm not kind of sad again. because it's it's just starting to come in like very nice, and then tomorrow it's going to be gone. I actually so want to be a home guy someday, so I'm not saying any, I'm not saying this in a negative. I mean that in the best possible way. Sure you are. Right? Sure you are. Really? Oh no, I have the homeless fantasy all the time. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> those guys don't care, man. No, but for me, it's like a post-apocalyptic survival game. Like I always think, well, like what if I just go you know one comment too far and my career ends and I've got to kind of like. <laughs> You know, what if I just pick the wrong issue to wait in on and it's all over? And then I just kind of like, well, I'll go to this neighborhood over here because there's really rich people and I and I scope out the shrubbery I like. Mm, and, you gotta um, have good shrubbery. That's for yeah. Sure. And I've got a game plan, which is to buy a lot of workout gear and just walk through the neighborhood all day, looking like I'm the guy who works out. And then that about dude, dark, so in shape. Yeah, and then about yeah. dark, I'll just slip into the bushes, and you know, I'll get like a hammock set up, and I'll get some novels from the library. I've got it all planned out. It's crazy <laughs> enough to work. I think it can happen. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then what, what's, what's crazier gonna... about what's crazier than all that is Nick said, maybe I'll maybe I'll try not to say something that'll go over the line, which is completely <laughs> not. I mean, he doesn't even care. He just says what comes to his. Mind. Well, right. it's funny. Like the late the latest debate, like. um really polarized people the gun stuff really polarized a lot of people and i saw people who normally don't wade into the fray wading into the fray mm. and then the, and, and then they got flamed you know or they had to block and ban people and what i realize is i no one ever says anything like no one ever calls me out anymore and says you've gone too far because like <laughs> i went too far a long time ago oh, way <laughs> now they just go back, back there the wall, that's nick <laughs> i went too far before going too far was too far yeah, but when you have someone like Hank Garner say something and and, and they're like, we need to lock Hank up. You know? <laughs> yeah, he believes in the Second Amendment. That's not yeah. acceptable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. We thought you were one of us, Hank. Thanks for nothing. I uh, I actually had a com a really good conversation on one of Hank's uh, blog posts uh, a couple of days ago. I was I was I actually it. impressed. Um, was the first time I've ever had a good conversation like that. So whatever. Yeah. Well, and Hank, Hank put it out there. He said, can we have an adult conversation? And it seemed like everybody in that, you know, was willing to actually, you know, listen before they gave their rejoinder or whatever, you know, rather than just, you know, anyway, whatever. Yeah. It was pretty yeah. boring. <laughs> and then he, yeah, exactly. there's like nothing was burnt. No careers were destroyed in that at all. It's yeah. just terrible. What a waste of time. And then he, I was getting ready yeah. to go my own car on fire. <laughs> <laughs> my my stance is this: um, the Constitution says that I can have a weapon. A... Don't see what happens. When you talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they just cut them off. If you're listening on the uh, on the Nick audio, feed, you're not watching live. Skynet right. was like Nick Cole's talking. Cut him off. <laughs> That's it. The, yeah. the federal government came in well, and for the record, here Nick at Keystroke, we, we are we are huge supporters of Skynet and all things <laughs> our digital overlords. So, yeah, I think that was the mayor of LA just making yeah. sure that Nick is going to be homeless. <laughs> yeah, fantasy <laughs> fulfilled. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, while Nick figures out out his uh suspension off of the interwebs we're gonna talk about um, books sometime let, let's talk about some books so uh jason uh you guys just released turning point uh yeah. what yesterday 23rd 23rd yeah, three days ago so uh ago. turning turning point is the seventh book in the galactic uh galaxy's edge series i want to say galactic outlaws and it 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 screws me up a little bit yeah um, galactic outlaws might be what it's called if disney ever just over overrides us and, and tells us we have to go away with that galaxy's edge name if they outlawyer us <laughs> you gotta <laughs> outlawyer them i have faith <laughs> we've got first use right i mean yeah I oh yeah galaxy's edge. i remember being like oh that was interesting when disney announced the name of the theme park but we had already released our books by that point that was close uh well while well, i try to get uh, i'm gonna try to get nick back in here but um Let's talk a little bit about it because you, we had you guys on the show um, a little over a year ago, well, maybe a little under a year ago now for season two, and we yeah. were just talking about, um, and actually I think it was on a Thursday Night Live episode where we were talking about uh, Galaxy's Edge and how Gal Galactic Outlaws and Legionnaire were two separate things at the time. Yeah, they were. Um, and now they have uh, formed together, and now Legionnaire is book one, and then Galactic Outlaws is book two. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that, how how we started out, and then how did we get to where we're at right now? Yeah, so if you remember, we were kind of playing off the whole idea of doing Star Wars, but having it not be Star Wars. And um, Galactic Outlaws, for people who've read the series, is much more of a space opera adventure. Um, and so that was the book that Nick and I were working on together for a long period of time. Um, we had that just about ready to go, but I had been writing on the side Legionnaire. I was like, well, I want to write kind of a military science fiction, hardcore, like let's make the stormtroopers really cool type book. And I finished that and it was done. It was edited. And we thought, well, let's just go to market now in June and it can be a standalone series. We'll make it its own thing and we'll make galaxy's edge be the space opera thing. But then Legionnaire just took off so huge that we we're like Such well we need day. to follow this up from a business Such perspective a it's so it's so awesome if you haven't read legionnaire yet and i read it like a day and a half which for me is like lightning fast and now i have it on audiobook i'm about ready to start that one again too oh yeah and rc bray is just so awesome on that book he's he uh he, he's amazing we have some we have some vets and some guys that are serving and they were messaging us and they're like oh yeah when rc bray is like barking out orders i find myself like reaching for my radio to like respond to him so I don't get chewed out. So I feel like when you get that level of immersion, you've, you've got a, a world-class narrator. Yeah. I, uh, I just, I started listening to the audio book the other day and I've read, but I just started five. I just started five. So I, I started listening to the audio book when I was in Vegas and mm -hmm. uh, very well done. I think I, uh, I, I like RC Bray. Um, but the book is fantastic. If you guys haven't read Legionnaire, you definitely need to, um, because it's one of those rare, rare books that you it it's the slaps you with action right out of the gate, and there's not really any context right at the beginning. But that's completely okay with this book, and uh, it uh, it works. And then the I loved what you guys did, uh, turning it into a series, and then going from Legionnaire to Galactic Outlaws to Kill Team, and then to um, uh, attack of shadows um is instead of writing so this might be a really good question to start out with instead of writing a straight series where it's all the it's a linear uh journey through mm -hmm. the narrative and we start at the beginning and then we go to the end we've started at the beginning and then jumped forward to the future and then gone back and then gone sideways a little bit and then twisted it back and then came back to the the present and then jumped way back into the past and then came back to the present. So, um, but it's been successful. So I think on this, on this model with, let's just talk about just the simple structure for now. What was it uh, about changing the structure of the books that really kind of intrigued you guys about that while writing the series? So um, like we tend to both have a desire to do 
to challenge ourselves. And so we knew that we didn't want to just have a military science fiction series, though it's those are fun and, and they're great. We, we wanted to have like a space opera series. We wanted to be able to write bounty hunter books later. Um, we wanted to be able to write, you know, Han Solo at Star's End later, that kind of a story. And if we just went all out hardcore mill sci-fi, um, we felt like it would be harder to say, oh, and now this. So the so that first book is just pure military science fiction with just the slightest hint at the end in the epilogue that Nick wrote. And then the second book is space opera. And then the third book jumps you back to military science fiction. So that third book, Kill Team, is actually was designed to be the sequel to Legionnaire. It's like you're um, pulsing, but, pulsing the genre. It's like a genre pulse kind of. Yep, exactly. And, and then, so then by the time you get to book four, you've got kind of Tom Clancy meets Star Wars. And yep. it really isn't until book five that all the pieces are together and we say, okay, let's go. And, and we start carrying the narrative all the way through to the end here. Yeah, I... Um... Nah, he's back. Good. I'm back. I was just imagining that you're still talking on your phone going, man, these guys are just not chiming in. They're not listening to, to me at all. I have to carry this whole conversation. I think <laughs> when I said, I think when I like heard no response to my plan to overthrow the U.S. government, <laughs> I like thought like, wow, these guys are really stunned and on board. And then I was like, oh, no, I got this. No. <laughs> <laughs> They're not down with our rebellion. Those bastards. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so Jason was just talking about how he's carrying the whole series and how you're just kind of uh, piggybacking off of his success. It's totally true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's a Jason show. He does all the work and everything like that. And um, between him and David Gatewood, like they glue a lot of my stuff together, but it's not very good they they improve it uh, i come up with like one good line like i'll do like my nick cole thing where i'll make something really touching you know like the death of a legionnaire and then like that saves my contribution because it's it's a good scene i can write that scene but it's just pretty much all garbage up to that point so, so you start so you started the series with uh, the galaxies of dumpster fire and then jason just took it from there and, and no no uh, jason jason came up with that phrase too. oh, oh really? nice. <laughs> yeah, got, that's got nick all over it yeah i'm just i'm just waiting for jason to figure out that he doesn't need me in the least well, contractually, I do, right? Like, yep. we signed the contract. <laughs> yep, that's the whole <laughs> purpose right Stop. there. <laughs> Joke's on you, Jason. Yeah, you will. I am a fungus you will never get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of smelly also. <laughs> exactly. But so uh, we, as long, we, yeah, as long as the check is clear, good. it's all good. We were uh, we were talking about how the, uh, the different books in the series – pardon me while I stir my coffee. Uh, the Jungle different books Pulse. in the series um, – kind of change structure wise uh as we go through and and we mentioned earlier that uh originally galactic outlaws was book one and then it became book two and then we carried on from there so um we were talking about how structurally the series is different than most where it doesn't go from the beginning to the end it kind of jumps around and jason uh hit it right before i was able to say it i i love that you guys are exploring different ways not only in the overall structure of the series but in the little in the individual books because in um in attack of shadows it's it's really like a very like a um a red rising is that right no uh carnal yeah, the kremlin Car red, yeah, red storm rising uh tom clancy deal where you're jumping back and forth between these um people on both sides of the conflict and you've got the the um tags of where they're at and what time it is and i thought I thought that was really, really neat. And actually, when I got about 20% into the book and realized we'd only gone five minutes, I was like, oh, this is going to be a great book. <laughs> yeah, I always, you know, like I read Red Storm Rising right before I went into the military back in the late 80s. And I think I, I always wanted to write the science fiction version of Red Storm Rising or just like a lot of the early Tom Clancy novels. I, I didn't read a lot of the later ones, but where... They did that sort of minute by minute, you know, big assets being moved in, the big fleet battle. And um, I thought that, I thought that, like, I don't even think I maxed out how much I wanted that book to be bigger. But because, you know, if you go back and look at all those Tom Clancy books, they're like, you know, five, 500 pages and all that kind of stuff. So I hope I'm kind of like in the next book, which is going to be called um, God, Sellis Win God Sellis Wins Everything, Red Storm Rising. Um, <laughs> 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 I don't want to give everything away. 
But um, I, I think I'm going to return to that a little bit. And I tried to do it in Turning Point, too, with the different Legion units and their attack. But, um, yeah, I really like that. And Jason and I are right now pitching maybe another military science uh, 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 fiction space marine series for an audio only produce. And, really? and I, yeah, and I think if we, if we really double down on the space marine aspect, we're going to back out of the space opera thing and really just concentrate on hardcore weapons and tactics. Yeah. Well, I think, I, I think that, that, I mean, that was kind of Jason's focus in Legion air. And, and I think, um, and then I ruined everything. No, well, no, but I, I <laughs> yes, yes, you did. Uh, but Come on, think, it's, it's the unspoken cloud in the room. No, that, um, that pulled yeah. a lot of people in for, for, for the series is that whole, audience, guys. yeah. Yeah, the funny thing, though, is that that book, like the, Jason and I had come up with this series idea seven months before we released Legionnaire. And yeah. um, what we were doing is we were writing Galactic Outlaws the whole time. And then we talked to a friend. We talked to Richard Fox. And, Richard. and he basically, yeah, and he basically, Richie Fox, who we're Richie. about to... We're going to go to Napa and hang out and play D&D &D with him and Chris Fox for two nights, and it's going to be great. Nice. Um, yeah, and so he he was kind of the one that really said, listen, you got to get down to this 60-day release window. This is this is the way that it's going. And so Jason and I were kind of looking. I forget. Like, there was, there was a moment where we were like – I was just talking to Nicole about this last night, and I was saying, like, initially, I think that Jason and I originally planned to release every six months. Mm -hmm. And that's how much, like, the paradigm has really shifted. Like now I think we've become the prophets of you've got to, you know, like we're the PX 90 insanity of releasing. Yeah. And yeah, but, but six months ago we like, or, or, or a year ago this time, like I remember like it was right about this time that we were literally like, well, we're not going to make it or anything like that. And then Jason said, well, I've had this, this other project that I've been, and it was part of the galaxy's edge universe, but I think it was going to initially be like the next novel. Yep. And Jason got it finished first. And we're like, okay, well, let's, we began to stack our releases and try to figure everything out. We positioned the Legionnaire first and it was just a gift from God because it really, I'm going through it and listening to it now with RC Bray and you just really get why, why everybody gets drawn into it, especially after you go through like every author does and read all the reviews. And, and the great thing is that, that now begins to kind of shape how you write things because you're writing to market and you're, you're listening to what people want. I don't always do that. I kind of like to write whatever I want and then sort of just throw it in Jason's face and say, get me. Um, <laughs> but but I, I'm learning to, to, to be more service oriented. And I think that, I think people need to remember that that this was your guys's foray into military science fiction. Yeah, exactly. And, and we to were, come out that strong, I mean, just blew people's doors off and stuff. We have a question also that says, is Jason disconnected or just letting Nick do all the talking? We've established, if you came in earlier, uh, Jason is is actually, that's a live picture. He's doing ventriloquism. He's trying to remain completely motionless. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Also, yeah. we, don't take, we don't take questions. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I guess, uh, I guess a good follow-up to that, um, would be now that the series is on seven books, it's going to nine. And then we'll talk about some other stuff here later. Um, how much has it, has it done what you thought it was would do, or has it blown your expectations out of the water knowing that you had to cycle down of what you wanted to do with the series? The oh, best part is that I now take this question and don't let Jason answer. Yeah, he just goes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but Jason, you may answer this one, Jason. Ah, thank you, thank you. No, it blew our expectations out of the water. We were honestly expecting that we would reach a point of earning back our investment around book five. Like that was kind of our, our thought process. Hey, after we get five books, we should have enough revenue going that we can pay back uh, all our cover costs and pay back uh, all our editing costs. But Legionnaire was such a big hit that we basically just started in the black and have been really blessed to be able to operate from a position of success, um, which has allowed us to have more success because you know now we actually have money for ads. We have uh, you know money to do all sorts of things, Matt. and uh, that that makes a huge difference in the quality of of artwork we can afford in 
the ability to keep paying a really high end editor, uh, all that happens because we know each month we'll be able to pay off our bills. So I'd help you write. E does that make writing easier or harder? Knowing it makes it easier because I can just be like, eh, editing will get this and <laughs> just, just move on to the next one. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, like success, I think what success does is it motivates you to get out there and write more. And I would, I would definitely hypothesize that there, there is a, a sort of like a, a bell curve about success where like initially it, it encourages you to, to, to want to write more because you want to reproduce the same effect and you want that royalty check every month. And so like when you have no sales and we all, we, we have all been there, there are those, those early months where you're like, I am literally just doing this for the love. No one cares. And if I walked away, you know, but then you start to get some success and you get some nice checks or you, you know, sometimes you, I think the cool thing about sharing your success in a non, you know, Jason way where you're like telling everybody how much better you are than everybody. <laughs> when you, when, when you, you Jason, the time. <laughs> and Jason does do that. He's very <laughs> humble. But when you, when you, when you share your success as a roadmap to others, which is something that like you see in Chris Fox, you, you see in Michael Onderly, you see in Richard Fox, you see guys who've done well and they're perfectly willing to share their success in a non sort of like, this is why I'm great way. But here's my other guess is that the, is that the, I don't even know. I never even understood curves. Like whenever the professor said like, you're grading on a curve. I had no idea what that meant. Um, but I think there's an, there's a, there's a downside to that curve in that you can get too much success and you can get lazy or not want to write at all because now you've made so much money. You're just like, I'm going to get on a boat and sail around and say insane stuff. Right. Yeah. And, you just tell yeah. people that if you want guns, yeah. you need hormone therapy. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You're, just, you're just going to be a crazy lunatic. I don't like guns. Uh, Give me my Doritos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the trick, but I, I don't think I'll ever have that problem because I just love to write. I always do. And like, there, there was one moment where Jason and I maybe had like a kind of a big deal um, coming in and it's still on, on, on the horizon, but it was a pretty phenomenal amount of money. And it was like literally quit everything money. You don't need to do anything now. And, and I was like, would I still write? And I was like, yeah, there's, lot, there's not enough time for me to write all the things that I want to write, even if I live a nice long age. So I'm the kind of guy who would write in prison between the beatings and the rapes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else? And me. I'd be doing the raping. I don't want you to think I'm a, <laughs> yeah. a beta. I'm what not a do? victim here. Yeah I'd, be a, sure. yeah, I'd be asserting my power. I don't even <laughs> like it. But I think that's what you have to do to win in prison. Yeah. And I'm all about, I think if you go to prison, you have to have a winner's mindset. <laughs> think po positive mental attitude. Very important. <laughs> exactly. And that's going to be Jason and I's next book, Bringing the Prison Mentality to Indie Publishing. <laughs> <laughs> and we've never been to prison, but that doesn't stop us from having that. So, so who's going to do the research on it? If you keep talking about guns in LA, it's, it's only yeah. a matter yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll yeah. be knocking on your door here in a minute exactly <laughs> i think jason with his seven kids like there's a part of him that says you know a weekend in jail a, a dui weekend in jail probably would be nice yeah, yeah. a refreshing yeah. getaway you know, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I like my life i i, I like <laughs> like i'm the guy people are like oh let's let's do something and no kids and i'm i'm the one who's like oh well that doesn't sound very fun yeah. so i'm i'm a glutton for that kind of punishment well, I tell you, I uh, I just had two weeks of no kids and uh, hotel room by myself mostly, and uh, I got back and I was like, ah, oh, this is so nice. Kids are jumping all over me. My my son scratching my face out, and I'm like, yes, I like this. This yeah, is yeah. Nice. There you go. Right, exactly. I, mean, I like yep, getting that, that's exactly. Nerf guns and other. The last you know. of the family men. Yes, exactly. So uh, let's. Um, I want to talk about the show sponsor this week, and then we'll get into uh, some more Galactic Outlawed Galaxy's Edge. I always want to say Galactic Outlaw. Get it out of your head. It's Galaxy's Edge. Uh, so today's sponsor is the event by Nathan Heistead. It is up for pre-order right now. Uh, this book, uh, I've been talking with Nathan about this book for probably a year, and uh, I read it um, a year ago when he first sent me the, the draft, he's been working on it. And then kind of following your guys's um, release 
schedule and and protocols by having one and two already ready to go and so uh, he's been working on this series for a while uh the first uh book is out march 2nd and uh this is the blurb the ships came at dawn dean's wife is dead her last words when the ships come wear the necklace when the ships arrived, cities around the world reported strange alien vessels descending. Some saw them as the heralds of a new age. Others fired everything they had at them. All were taken as the beams lashed down and drew them into the sky. But Dean was left behind, seemingly the last man on Earth. A trail of clues left by his dead wife guide Dean on a perilous journey across America and beyond to learn the truth beyond the mysterious ships and save humanity from its doom. I love saying doom like that. Doom. But not everything. Say three times. Doom, doom, doom. Doom, doom, doom. But not everything is as it seems. The event is an epic first novel by Nathan Highstead, created their best-selling Explorations Anthology. The sequel is out April 2nd, so 30 days uh, a month after. So I linked it in the... Oh, the link doesn't work. Hmm. Let me see. <clears throat> I would uh, say I, that that sounds like a TV show. Like that's a good book. People yes. should read that book. Mm -hmm. I, I'm really excited for it to come out. The, yeah. the, the covers are by um, uh, Tom Edwards, and they're phenomenal covers. Oh yeah. Nice. I would be able to show it, but uh, Google broke my overlay, so I don't. I, mean, I don't know uh, what's going on with that. But the link in our messenger works, but it doesn't work in our chat for some reason. So I don't know if that's because. Mm, it, I don't know. Sometimes you have an S. Oh, it could be. Yeah. If it only could there be. were a way that people could just hear the title again and then just go look it up. Themselves. Ooh, uh, the crazy. event. It's called the event. Yeah. If only they, there were some yeah. kind of device in which they could enter the input that would take them across some sort of system that would land them at a, a, a book okay. selling service. A search, I, in, a search engine within a, a store. I call, yeah. it, I call it the interweb. Named after a big river. Yeah. I wish there was something like that. I could go buy more books. Exactly. I'm so sorry. Um, so we're out, we're published book seven. Getting back to uh, Galaxy's Edge, we we've just published book seven th uh, three days ago, and now we're going for eight and nine. Um, do you want to tell us kind of where the series is going after that? What do you guys have planned? Uh, like, are you, are you I, asking for spoilers? Is that it? I am asking for spoilers. Yeah. Or are you asking for big business plans? Oh, uh, both. Let's do both. Let's start with business plans and we'll do spoilers. Let's not say Jason, which one is which. Let's have Jason do business plan and I'll do spoiler first. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. okay. Um, the spoiler is everybody's gay. No. Um, <laughs> and in prison. Yeah, everybody's gay and in prison. It takes, it takes, the book eight takes a bizarre turn. No, um, basically, <laughs> we're. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna wrap see that's the kind of stuff that's gonna make me homeless and, and then, i get it but and i've got it's homeless... like delete before it goes to david but i've got a homeless plan um so book eight is gonna be the end even though there's a book nine like for everybody who's longing to know what the end of this 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 series is it's gonna come to you in book eight the major arc you know the overwhelming conflict is going to be wrapped up and you're going to know who won and uh a lot of people are going to be dead um and that's the end of the series and you could just walk away there and you knew everything that happened in galaxy's edge up to this point book nine is going to be the spiritual payoff and we're going to take it right back to the roots of legionnaire and it's just it's just going to be it's going to be the Magnificent Seven meets Seven Samurai, which is basically the same movie, um, sort of meets the best like revenge movies, Die Hard, not Die Hard, um, you know, Death Wish, Payback, all that kind of stuff, uh, that Mel Gibson movie, which was great. So it's, it's um, book nine is going to be is going to be the spiritual sort of return to Legionnaire. It's going to pay it off. But. Book eight, you're going to you're gonna know the end of the galaxy. And then that's cool. And then um, at that point, uh, and we're going to delay book nine just for a couple of months to get it all tweaked out and, and fine. But in the meantime, we're launching a new series that if Jason says I can tell you about it now because two of the <laughs> authors are here in it, um, we're going to be launching a new series called Order of the Centurion, which I think uh, you guys are doing books in. Yep. Yes, sir. Right? Yep. What's the name? What's the name of your books? Uh, right now it's Strikers War, but I that may change by the time it's done. But Strikers War is the the title of mine. My working title is Battle Planet. But that's Sweet. Working title. And Order of the Centurion. Um, if you read the 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 short story Tin Man, uh, the Order of the Centurion is is 
the Legionnaire's highest medal. It's like the Medal of Honor. And 98.6% of the uh, recipients who get it, get it posthumously. And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to build our own Kindle worlds. And so we brought in the best science fiction authors and they're going to tell, they're sort of, it's going to be straight up military, very Legionnaire tales, no big space opera arc. It's just going to be like the best war stories you've ever heard set in the Galaxy's Edge universe. We've got, um, we've got uh, a bunch of other authors coming in. Who, who else do we have, Jason? So we've got J.R. Hanley who is yeah. listening to the show right now. So I want to say him first so that he doesn't Sweet. feel sad. Um, we've got Richard it's Fox. Stalk you. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. We've got, we've got Richard Fox. Uh, we have uh, Jonathan Yanez, who is uh, just killing it with his Iron Wolves. Oh, yeah. Um, is it, I, I don't know if Iron Wolves is part of his Galaxy's Edge story. He really likes wolves and metal. And so, yeah. th- th- so that, that's part of it, too. So Jonathan Yanez is in it. Um, and then we have a few people that, say they're, they they want to be in but they haven't given us contracts yet so i don't know if we should say their names or not nick no don't say their names okay sorry you didn't sign the paper fast yeah. enough yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> um, they missed out on the, the keystroke medium reveal right. yeah <laughs> and i say just for the keystroke medium people let's tell them our big news because we're super close to signing a contract with this person oh okay, okay. yeah <laughs> so um all right. Yeah, fine. Um, it's okay. We so are really this is a excited. worldwide exclusive. You guys are getting it first. And this is, this is going to be big news because let me frame this before Jason says his thing. No other indie author has done what we're about to do. And that's like, we're going to make, I, I think, I think it's newsworthy enough that it's going to shake the publishing world because we're the first indies to go poach a trade pub author, a major trade pub author and have them come into our world. So ready? Right, yeah, no pressure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready. So, so uh, the long and short of it is, as we were writing Legionnaire, a lot of readers came to us and said, I found the series because I was a real big fan of a particular author, and she isn't able to write in that series anymore, but she was the best. And boy, it would be great if she could write a Galaxy's Edge book. And that author was named Karen Travis. And you know Karen Travis from uh, Gears of War, from Halo, from Star Wars, the, the Clone Commander series. Um, She's just amazing. She's amazing. She's high speed. And so we started talking. Yeah, right. Uh, Yeah, well, of course. So we started talking, and she was into it. Um, We kind of talked to our fan base uh, and said, what do you think about about Karen? And it was overwhelmingly positive. So Karen is going to be writing a standalone trilogy, New York Times bestseller. Karen Travis is going to be writing a standalone trilogy set in the Galaxy's Edge universe, and we could not be more excited about that, that is awesome. right that's, that's so yeah. amazing yeah i mean and that's to me that's the pit i mean like one when people talk about space marine and like there are operators guys i know with actual trigger time and when they talk about the the novels that really influenced them her clone clone series um is is one of the top like and i know people who just consider her like an unofficial ranger just mm-hmm. because they love how she writes so the bringing her into this was like so stunningly cool hat tip to John Spears. Cause he was actually the one that like encouraged us to, to, to give it a try and see if she would come in and do that. Um, and then the, the, the secondary thing that makes this cool is like, this is, this is showing, and I, I don't think we should call ourselves like all of us in, in quote unquote indie pub. See, here's my air quotes. Um, <laughs> just and, one and, side and, though it's just, yeah, just one i just i do open-ended air quotes but <laughs> i don't think we're indie pub anymore i think we're new pub mm. and this is the first time i really think that's going to be really super significant where <laughs> she was at harper collins with me except she was you know cared for and loved and big time she's written for disney she has like massive credit she has a massive following and she's sensed the sea change and she is going to come over to us and work with us. And I think that this is the beginning of something that's going to affect publishing over the next year or two. We're really going to see it happen when Barnes and Nobles closes. But um, this is the first trade pub author to come and work with indies in their world. So I think that's gigantic. But to have Karen, I mean, it's not like you're getting some, you know, down and out second rate, you know, guy who got dropped by his uh his his, his brand or whatever like that I mean, this he got is out of Karen. prison 
Yeah. yeah. No, but you know, like one of those old sort of tour crowd guys who hasn't written anything meaningful or worthwhile or criticizes his cover artist because he doesn't like the cover. You know, one of those oh like losers. One of those <laughs> loser dudes. I mean, this is this is Karen freaking Travis. She influenced like Disney took characters from her because she's so good. Yeah. And that that series is iconically good. So um Yeah, if you look even, up her wiki page page if you're not familiar with her, yeah. it kind of lays out her curriculum vitae and it's astounding yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so that she would even want to come and do this just bespeaks like i think she just gets where the momentum is going she's smart and savvy it's it's hard when you're you're like for most and i was one of those authors when you're when your hand is in the bowl of rice it's hard to realize that the game has changed and you got to step away and take responsibility and and become the master of your own fate your own destiny your own ship i named three things there for no reason um so you know like uh, it's it um the level with which jason and i are treating this is is huge like we've already decided like all the stops get pulled out um we were already recruiting like video game cover box art level people to come in and do this and we're going to show the world like how hard she can launch and yeah to the top Exactly. So we're excited about that. And then we got a Tyrus Rex novel coming out and Jason has the first female Legionnaire story coming out. And then oh, we'll cool. do a set. We'll do a Savage Wars uh, series over the summer. And then we'll jump back into the current galaxy's edge timeline telling you the aftermath story. Well, mm-hmm. I think, I think you, you, I mean, you just look at, um, I mean, you mentioned uh, the new, the new pub situation with, with what's going on with you guys. But I mean, that, that speaks a lot to you guys as a writer, as writers, because it's, just, it started out as, you know, just you guys pushing publish on a button or pushing a button and, and publishing your book and then publishing the next one and then the next one. And then look at, at this thing that it's turned into. It's, it's kind of, it's not really, acquired a life of its own but you can just see look at this i mean you guys you guys have done great work with this series and uh, i i'm i'm excited to be a part of it i i know scott is too and oh yeah and um uh i remember uh pitching you guys uh way back in the beginning of last year um and you guys were eager with it and then decided to go the other direction with the series uh, and but then you came back and we're like, hey, we're gonna do this. Would you still like to do it? And I was like, uh, absolutely, I would. I remember that day because I remember Josh like going, ding, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so sorry. thank you very much for the opportunity. First to, to write. Well, on. you guys, you guys are the new masters. You guys are the new grand masters. I don't think it's that old loser crowd. You guys get. Uh, <laughs> I got strong opinions. That's gonna. Right. That's, right. that's how I end up. No, but it's true. Like they don't understand. And this is a conversation I'm having with another science fiction guy from the old school. And he and I keep talking and he keeps pitching me this stuff that would have been great in 1985. But I'm like, it doesn't, it's not like that anymore. It really is going back to the new pulp, you know, I mean, the old pulp, you know, of the thirties and the forties and fifties, you got to write fast. You've got to write good. It's got to be action. Um, no one's really interested in these sort of like super Shakespearean, you know, uh, navel gazing, navel gazing stuff. Yeah. You nailed it there. Um, people want to be entertained right now. And so you guys have mastered that. And so it was really just like Karen and Travis, it was a privilege for you guys and J.R. Handley and Jonathan Inez and the other people that we're talking to, to even want to play because you guys get it. There would be no sense in bringing in, you know, noted author from the 80s and having him download his you know weirdness on us and not really getting the style like you guys get the style you're fans of it and our, i think jason and i's end game is is to to mentor all of you in a certain way so that you can begin to take ownership not to be confused with actual ownership of of the galaxy and and begin to to grow and tell the story and we can just walk away and collect money based on your hard effort. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm honest I'm about that. I, you know, just cash yeah. the checks. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but we have to mentor because I think what I learned from an old uh, uh, thing that I was involved in that shall not be named um, is that you got to develop your talent. You can't just go and look for talent and recruit them. Like they've got to get you. And we even did that with Karen Travis. Like, we had to kind of audition for her and there was a story beat that we told her that's an, an imperator 
And of all the things that we, we were worried about that would attract her or, or, you know, like for me, I'm more worried about repulsing people because I know I'm a polarizing figure. Um, but when she locked onto this one story be about the nature of the galaxy, she was totally all in and we're like, yeah, you get it. You totally get this property. So, um, you guys are like that. You guys are, you guys are fans of blasters, bots and bounty hunters. Kill them first. And yeah. I just like to point out that I've got the uh, I've got the Victory Company. You did uh, shirt on. Nice. <clears throat> Specific for the episode. I think this is actually the first time I've worn it, except for the uh, the picture that I took. And I just want to point out is that uh, the XXL. Think... <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Well, it's the, the XL. XL. <laughs> it's the XL. And I was yeah. just holding my breath for thirty seconds while yeah, I stood. I've... I put on the XL, and I was like, if I would have flexed, I would have ripped it in two. You <laughs> yeah. That, that would have been yeah, a, a, a great stadiums. work for your brand. Yeah. <laughs> no, no to everybody. Go a little large on that shirt. Hulk out. Hulk out of your yeah. shirt. That's what, we're trying, that's what we're going for here. Yeah. I, uh, I, I was um, – so I bought the shirt not thinking anything of it, and then I posted a – a picture of it on the uh, the ins was it the insiders or the fan club i can't remember it was one of the two groups i posted a picture and then uh lo and was behold it was a galaxy's edge dungeon because we don't talk about that one uh yes it was the dungeon um yeah. but i was not i was not tied up at that time uh so i i posted a picture and then i turn i'm in turning point uh fun <laughs> fact uh, <laughs> that some guy i can't remember his name he's in he's another fan he he posted a, a, a link or a, a comment in that picture like a couple months later. And he was like, hey, LSO1, Keystroke is in the book and there's a little deal. And so when I bought it, I flipped, I flipped to the page and I was like, oh, I'm there. <laughs> so, uh, so fun fact, I am Keystroke in uh, Turning Point. Did so you I, die or did you live? I haven't got that far yet. I didn't want to read a whole bunch because I haven't read uh, five yet. So I'm still oh, getting did you, there. I, did you go to prison in that book? I don't know, but he did make me an explosive expert, which I thought was really neat. Yeah, Touched. you know, I, I strive for authenticity. <laughs> Touched by a donk. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have to go read it. Yeah, every read it. Leave your comments. So with the and so I just wanted to point out too that you were saying um, making sure that we had a, a good product before you went through, uh, yeah. unlike the other thing that you were a part of. Um, was it always kind of a plan for you guys to do kind of a, a Kindle Worlds deal with this thing, or when it when it kind of took off, you were just like, well, this is just kind of the next step in in the process. Yeah, it was uh, part of it. I, I think is we both have an interest in new pub and publishing in general. And so we spend a lot of time talking about story development and what we want to do. But we spend a lot of time talking about what's the future of publishing? What, what, what do we need to do to keep ourselves vibrant as a brand? Um, and we felt like this was a good, a good fit. Also, a lot of people were just asking us, can I write a book in Galaxy's Edge? And a lot of times the answer was, well, you can't, but for you guys, <laughs> for you guys, it's like, well, yeah, yeah, we want, we want you guys for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't think that's necessarily a comment on, on writing, but I think that we've tried to find an audience um, that is maybe a little bit underserved with the way science fiction is, especially like award science fiction. Um, we have people who have served um, and who are conservative and proud of being conservative, things like that, um, like their weapons, like the fact that they fought for their country. And so this series really resonates with them. Um, and we said, well, let's, let's find other people that kind of get that culture, like kind of that black rifle coffee type of a culture. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's all, that's all part of it. So um, everything we're doing has, has a, a big long thought process behind it. Yeah, yeah and, uh, we, and we had to find people who weren't, who were like, we have right now in publishing, you know, or, or in all of culture and society right now, you have this bully pulpit of people who want to ask you SJW questions and, and shame you if you don't write, you know, things that they agree with. So we had to find people that were willing to write the truth, even if it wasn't what people wanted to hear. And, and so that's, a, that's a hard thing today. You know, like you have people that are, 
that are writing books that they think people want to read or they don't want to get in trouble, you know, or they want to make the female ninja who can beat 20 space Marines with a knife and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, we're writing more realistic military fiction, not military fantasy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I tell you, it's a, it's a real challenge for me going back. I'm, I'm writing, I, I'm editing uh, Bloodlines right now, but I went from drafting Bloodlines to then jumping into writing more of uh, Strikers War, which I think we're at like 46,000. Um, it should be done probably by the end of uh, March, I would assume. Uh, but then now I'm jumping back in. So I'm trying to keep, like, do I have droids here or do I have blasters here? It's not the N4, it's something else. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why Scribner is good because you can just search for that stuff. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, well, I'm really excited to uh, see where the rest of the series is going, and then obviously see uh, how the readers like the the expanded universe with the Kindle series and stuff. Um, the different writers coming out and and publishing their books. Uh, you mentioned um, doing a Savage Wars. Uh, trilogy or um, a book th this summer. Um, you, can you explain a little bit about that and maybe your thoughts on on that series? How that's different from your uh, your actual series right now? Yeah the, um, the 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 genesis of of the world is or as the galaxy as we have it now is that the galaxy is involved in a conflict between a, a galaxy spanning republic and an upstart empire, and that empire is literally kicking the hell out of them. But before all of this, the Legion was formed to deal with a threat called the Savages. And if you read Imperator, that tells you who the Savages are. Um, basically, a long time ago, uh, Earth nuked itself almost to death. And the best and the brightest of Earth um, jumped on colony transports that were light huggers, meaning they, they barely they barely went to the edge of, of light speed hitting sublight, which still takes a long time to go anywhere. But they had these massive colony ships. And so it was like everybody in Scientology, all the celebrities, all those kind of people, they took off all the government leaders and they just left everybody here to die. And about seven years after they left, someone discovered hyperdrive and they took off out into the stars. They reached the stars ahead of the, the, the elites. And they set up a, a, a bunch of, you know, systems and, and everything. And so anyways, the elites who'd been crawling through the darkness at, at sublight speed, they'd kind of gone crazy and post-human and sort of biomechanical. And, you know, like, like that when, when Charlie Sheen did way too much Coke that time and he started talking <laughs> about winning, they, they kind of become like that. Um, <laughs> There's space Charlie Sheens. And so the space Charlie Sheens show up and they don't get along and they they want to they want to you know win more as they take over the galaxy so then that was the savage wars and they actually end up showing up and doing a pretty good job to the point that it culminates in a massive sort of world war ii style battle which most of our legionnaire action that we showed in the modern timeline has been either modern conflict or sort of vietnam era conflict but what the savage wars trilogy that we're developing would be much more World War II style warfare and um, in space with zeros and Messerschmitts. No, I'm just joking about that. But <laughs> definitely, definitely Charlie Sheen. He would definitely be on the, the, the that kind of thing. Um, and so we say all that to say this: the reason the Legion the reason the Legion exists is because of these savages. The the Legion was brought in. If you read um legionnaire it tells you exactly why it was you know the the galaxy was about to surrender to the savages and they developed the legion as a last ditch effort to stand against the savages and so i think what we'll be telling in that series is the origin story of the legion mm -hmm. yeah i was waiting i was waiting for jason usually he mm -hmm, and then continues then he comes in and corrects me. It's like, no, it actually won't be that. Yeah, like actually, <laughs> everything you're saying is wrong. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for playing. but it sounds good. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I, I think that's the plan. It'll be an interesting series, and I think that the Savage era is an era that Nick has in his mind really well. And I don't mean that negatively. Like I don't have it, but um, <laughs> it, it, it'll be an interesting. <laughs> it'll be an interesting approach because like he said, if you read uh, say Tin Man, the free short story we have on our website for people, um, or if you read um, 
Um, I'd say a little bit of, of Turning Point as well, uh, or at least parts of Turning Point. There is a Vietnam feel. Um, the stuff that I've done definitely has a Afghanistan or Iraq feel. It's, it's all very, very modern. So being able to incorporate these different theaters of war and periods of history, uh, it, it'll be, I don't know, an interesting challenge, right? Because I'm, I've gotten used to the tech that we have right now. So to go back and say, we're going to reduce and limit our tech and have it be futuristic, but still have it feel older uh, is a challenge that I'm kind of looking forward to trying. Yeah, I think that I think the the theme that we're going to lock in on it is actually the modern superhero movie, which the thing that the reason they keep rebooting Spider-Man and Batman is like the origin story is kind of the funnest part. And then you get into the next and the third one and it kind of sucks. So <laughs> if you just keep telling the or so I think the fun part will be reverse engineering the Legion to show mm -hmm. the origin story and like, you know, to show the Batmobile. And to show Charlie Sheen's cocaine, you know, that will be the cool part. In space. In space, yeah. But, you know, like everything that we planted in this series, um, the fun part will be to go back and show like how it, how it, like a lot of people like a, a character that, that I killed off, which is Tyrus Rex. And he's the one that will actually form the Legion. So it'll be fun to kind of get back into his story. And um, also the main villain and him were friends at that time. So it'll be, it'll be fun to see that interaction how the Legion trains itself and develops itself. Um, it actually starts as, as sort of elite fighting forces from a bunch of different sections, including U.S. Army Rangers. And then it gets formed into this, this you know, 1% of 1% of 1%. That's very cool. Um, um, <clears throat> when, when do you think you're going to have that done? Is this summer, you said? I think we'll, you know, like we've got to see where, I think Karen's novels will probably start dropping in October. Um, <clears throat> I, so I, I yeah, I, I suspect. Wait. Yeah, cannot wait. Um, but you need to because it's going to be great. Oh, yeah. It's gonna, so yeah, um, I, I'm like I, I, I think that we're going to have the Tyrus Rex standalone novel, which is just going to be straight up Boba Fett bounty hunter action. You know, it's sort of his standalone tale. So it's sort of like Mac Bolin in space, and <laughs> um, that'll be like in May. And then Jason's uh, female Legionnaire novel addressing that issue will come out in june and then i suspect we'll do savage wars july through september hmm. does that sound about right yeah that sounds about right i mean it all I'll depends on okay, on what uh, what contracts are released right yeah exactly i'm really excited and, about the savage wars ones i've been looking forward to that since you first said the word yeah but then the cool thing is releasing you guys's order of the centurion novels um, in the same month as these. So we'll get out to two novels a month and I think we'll be able to build some some good groundswell. The important thing with that series is getting everybody's contract signed and getting all the novels stacked because mm -hmm. what we want to do is we want to release our first um, sort of Magnificent Seven Order of the Centurion novel. Then we're going to launch with Richard Fox. Then we're going to move into you guys and hopefully do you know 15-day pre-order, 30-day launch, 15-day pre-order, 30-day launch, should I say it again? 15 day pre-order, 30 day launch, rinse and repeat, basically, uh, you know, like and, and just, yeah. And just get that machine rolling and hopefully we'll see enough success out of that, that people are asking you guys, Hey, I now want you to do more, you know, either more order of the Centurion stories, or I think at that point we'd like to, you know, if, if one of your novels really hits really well, or all of your novels hit really well, um, we then want to hear how you're going to expand our universe. So maybe you want to get away and you want to write about a space smuggler or a space janitor or a space hooker. Prison. Or space prison. Space prison. <laughs> space prison. You know, or, or like an ex EOD cop who now makes meth, you know, like Breaking Bad in space. That'd be Breaking fun. Bad war in space. If yeah. only we knew somebody who knew. If only we knew, who knew how to make space meth. Knew somebody who'd been made meth within the last two weeks. Exactly. <laughs> only, legally, yeah. legally. Legally. And they destroyed it because yeah. that's what yeah. immediately what is, destroyed it. What is the recipe for meth? Just asking for a friend. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of nasty stuff that I would never, ever, ever think of putting in my body ever. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I tasted lithium batteries. <laughs> you did. You did taste <laughs> lithium. All the stuff you, you, everybody, all the conspiracy people think the government's putting in their food and then just, just cook that up. And What's crazy well, about the whole process is that when they're making it, they're in 
Thermal Pro chemical suits with self-contained breathing apparatus behind protective glass plates, and they're making this, and everybody else is like thirty feet away. And I think when you find it in the wild, that, it's like in somebody's car in their trunk. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're just like, yeah. yeah. Or it's the motel it room. <laughs> the motel room you're gonna stay at. Yeah. Uh, ridiculous. Really go wrong driving around with a mobile meth bomb in the back of your car. <laughs> what can go wrong? <laughs> so, what do you think? Uh, what do you guys have planned for the uh, the order of the Centurion novels? What, what when? What date? Uh, do you have anything lined out as to when you're going to start releasing those? I know you said you had one, your magnificent magnificent seven novel coming out, but do you have a, a planned time frame for those? I'm feeling like May, June, by the time we get everybody through editing and, and start getting a machine. We're just, I think we have Jer Hand Leaf story in now. We have Jonathan Inez's story. We're waiting for you guys. So, but we're not just going to like release those. We're actually putting those through a pretty severe developmental ed- editing process yep. um, because we, cool. we really want them to feel seamless with the universe. And the thing that we always wanted to avoid, which has happened with the last project that I was in, are people who just want to come in and jam their ideas into your world. And we're like, no, 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 you will have to create, you know, so, and you guys did that and everybody did that, but we just want to make sure that no one's just repurposing a novel they had in their drawer. Right. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Well, we are now running to the end of the hour. And uh, as always, when we're talking to you guys, it feels like it just started like five minutes ago and I don't, know where all the time went and nick's not in his car so i'm very disappointed about this you guys have been uh, in my car in vegas when we drove around we were, oh nice that's car. right we were why, did, why didn't we do a show from my we should car have done it. the it's next like time, a road, the road trip edition yeah. of keystroke medium the next yeah. time we're all together we will do as you've heard it here first yeah we're gonna do a show out of nick's car <laughs> When we drove around the sketchy refinery area, and then we yeah. drove over to the. Can, can uh, we not do that again, please? <laughs> and then, and then we <laughs> say, let's drive out in the middle of the desert and do a yeah. podcast. And yeah. here I am sitting in the back of Nick's expedition, like. Yeah. And we drove over to the hotel and looked at the shooting. Area. Yeah, it was all yeah. dark and weird. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, let's drive by this area. This looks like a good idea." And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Very surreal. <laughs> I was the one. Was, I like, loved it. It was good. Parked in the shadow. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. The sketchy gas station with the rundown limo. <laughs> yeah, and there's and there's Nick just walking in, and I'm like, Nick, don't go in there. Don't go in there. Oh, there he goes. I had to pee. <laughs> my, my favorite thing, and I still don't know the answer to this, is the footprints on top of the parking garage on the ceiling. Oh yeah, when we walked into the. Um, Every place there's these footprints on the ceiling in the support beams in the parking garages in Vegas, and I don't know why. <laughs> that was very because, weird. Because it got all Matrix. That's it true. did. That's what happened. There was a I'm Matrix just surprised that you even knew where to go because I was just, I'm still confused. I was there for a week and I still have absolutely no idea where to go in that place. And then there they was lost. the surreal Robin Leach uh, Emerald story. Oh, that was a great story. I had I had to like literally bleach my brain to get that story out of my head. <laughs> oh, I tell, I'm like, hey, have you guys ever heard this story? Let me tell you this story. I bet you, you haven't heard this story. <laughs> I think that we might have to go to, to reveal that story in public. So we that's right. Know. Yeah. Uh, well, if you guys wouldn't mind hanging out for just a minute, I'll wrap up and then uh, we'll go to a little bit of a post show. Everybody that hung out with us in the live chat, thank you guys for hanging out with us. It was a blast today seeing your shenanigans in the uh, chat room. Uh, Jason, Nick, thanks so much for taking out of your uh, day to come and hang out with us and uh, share some shenanigans. And uh, it, was it was our pleasure. Blast to have you guys. Thanks on. for coming twice. To the show because you like you're here and then you left and then you came back. <laughs> That's right. Josh, Josh's mind is filthy. Yeah, we're talking about prison rape. And then I threw that out there. Good job. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Nick called me out about it too. He's, he's I was gonna, just gonna let it go, and Nick called me no, out about it. No, I knew it as as the words were coming out of my mouth, I'm like, "This is a mistake." <laughs> let me put it this way: in Vegas, he Josh would have almost died. <laughs> I did almost die. I did almost die. <laughs> yeah, we had some yucks for sure. Oh my gosh, ridiculous! Well, uh, thank you everybody for hanging out with us. Uh, I don't know who we have on next week, uh, 
but it doesn't matter. You're going to come hang out with us anyway. It'll be um, Valley. Uh, and, I'll still be blushing by that time. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Well, we're going to cut this close before these shenanigans get out of hand. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us. Come back next week. We're going to talk about some reading. We're going to talk about some writing and, of course, everything in between right here on Keystroke Medium. Have a fantastic Monday. <laughs>